I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain ATV MC and today I'll be showing you how to test the stator on an ATV or UTV. There are a couple different types of stators that can be found in today's recreational equipment. It's either going to be a single phase or a three phase. Now when it comes to today's modern ATVs and UTVs, the most common type of stator that will be found in them is a three phase. And that's due to the fact that they have a higher demand for electricity in order to run the machine. Now stators are really reliable electrical components and they don't fail all too often. But if they do, how do you tell? Well today we're going to show you how to test the stator on an ATV and a UTV. All right, now when it comes to testing a stator, there's a couple things that you're going to need. You will need a multimeter and your service manual, just so that way you can follow along with the manufacturer's procedures on how to test and diagnose the electrical components. Now, as far as a digital multimeter goes, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on these. You can find them for relatively cheap at your local hardware store. They just need to be able to test volts AC, volts DC, and ohms. Now, when it comes to a stator, what is a stator? Now, a stator is basically a coil of wire and a magnet. Now the magnet's not in the stator itself, that's going to be in the stator rotor. Now that stator rotor's magnets are going to rotate around our stator and create AC electricity that will in turn be used up by the machine. Now when it comes to stators, it's important that you understand that there are some differences. They're not all created equally. The stator itself is not responsible for generating or telling the system when to spark. That would be the crank position sensor. And it's important that you know that there is a difference. Now the crank position sensor will sometimes be incorporated or built in to the exact same assembly as the stator, like here on our TRX450ER, or the crank position sensor will be separate from the stator assembly, like this machine here, our Polaris General. Now when it comes to common problems and stators, they really don't have common problems. When they fail, they typically just fail. Unfortunately, they don't give us any signs of failure up until they fail altogether. Now, how to tell if you have a three-phase stator versus a single phase is you'll want to take a look at the connectors that are on the stator's wire harness. So you'll locate the harness that's coming out of the engine's case on the ignition cover, and then you're going to trace that up to the connectors. Now, once you're looking at the connectors, you're going to be looking for three wires that are all going to be the same color. Now, they can either be all yellow, all white, or all black. Now, they may be housed in their own individual connector, or they will be housed in a connector that is accompanied by a couple of other wires. Now, if you have a single phase stator, it will not have these same three colored wires in the same connector. Now, when it comes to testing the stators, there's two tests that we can perform. We can do a static test and a dynamic test. Now, when it comes to static testing, what I mean by that is that the component is not in motion. It's not moving, it's not in action, it's not really doing anything, it's just sitting there. Now, what I mean by dynamic is that the component is in action, it's moving, it's performing, and when we're doing our testing today, our machine will be running. Now, we've got a Honda TRX450ER over here, and then we've got a Polaris General that we're going to be performing some static and dynamic tests on. So, to begin, we're going to start with the three-phase stator from the TRX450ER. To begin, we're going to take our multimeter, we're going to place it into the ohm setting so that we can take a resistance reading. Now on the stator itself, we're going to locate the connector that has the three same colored yellow wires, and then we can begin our test. Now there are three wires on this, so essentially there are three legs in the stator. Now when we make these connections, we're going to be testing winding one to winding two, winding two to winding three, and then winding one to winding three. So we're going to take our meter leads, we're going to place it inside of the connector that corresponds with the yellow wire on the back side of it. So our first test is going to be winding one to winding two. Then we'll take a look at our meter. So right here we're reading about 0.5 to 0.6 ohms. And the service manual specification for this stator is that we should be at least measuring 1.0 ohms to 0 0.1 ohms. So it looks like we're definitely in that range. So we'll change our meter leads over to test winding one to winding three. And again, it looks like we're right in that range. Now when you're taking a resistance measurement, it doesn't matter which lead you have where. When taking a resistance test, it is not polarity sensitive. Now we can move our meter lead over to the other winding so we can measure winding two to winding three. And again, we're getting 0.6, so it looks like we're in good shape as far as the resistance test. Now if you're taking this measurement and you are to read OL on the meter, meaning open line, or there's a break in the circuit, you will then need to replace your stator. Now the next test that we can perform 
with the stator is an insulation breakdown test. So basically we're checking to see if it's shorting out to ground. So we're gonna take our meter lead, place it onto one of the windings, and then we will take our other meter lead and either touch it to chassis ground or the body of the stator. Now for this test, we should not be able to take a resistance measurement. We shouldn't be getting a reading on our meter. So it should read oh well. If you are to get a measurement, that means that your stator is grounding out and then you will need to replace it. So we will repeat this test for windings two and windings three. Now again, keep in mind that you can perform this same test while the stator is installed onto the bike. Now, when doing your testing, if your stator checks out and it passes the static test, but you're still having a charging issue, chances are you've got something going on with your regulator rectifier. So if you'd like more information on that, we've got a really great how-to video that will show you how to test your regulator rectifier. Now the next test that we could perform on this stator is we're going to take a resistance reading on our crank position sensor. Now keep in mind that the service manual doesn't have a spec that we can compare our results to. That's because this is a pretty general test. Now, the service manual requires that we use a peak voltage adapter and will perform a dynamic test. Now, a lot of us don't have a peak voltage adapter or even know what it is. However, as long as you're able to take a resistance measurement from the crank position sensor, you should be in good shape. So we're gonna measure our resistance here. And as long as we're getting a reading, again, we should, we should be doing pretty good. Now, you can also check for an insulation breakdown. We can check for to see if the crank position sensor is grounding out basically. So we'll test this to the body of the stator or to chassis ground if this is installed in your machine. And as long as you are not getting a resistance measurement on your meter, you should be in good shape. Now again, if you are getting a reading, you will need to replace the stator assembly. Now it's important to remember that whenever you're doing any type of electrical testing on your machine that you always have the service manual with you. That way you can follow along with the guidelines and procedures to make sure that you're doing everything right and that you can properly diagnose your machine. So now that we're finished with this stator, we're gonna move over to the Polaris General and do the test, some static tests and dynamic tests with the stator installed on the machine. All right, so we're here at the side of our vehicle, our Polaris General, and this right here is our stator cover. Now, all the tests that we have showed you at the bench, the static testing, we can perform all of those right here on the machine with the stator installed. Now, we do need to locate our stator, so on our ignition cover here, we can see these three yellow wires that are coming out of the engine's case. Now, we've already gone ahead and disconnected this. We're just gonna pull it out. And this is our connector. Now on this side of the engine's case, we also have our crank position sensor, which we have also disconnected. So now to do our static testing, like we showed you on the bench, we're going to place our meter into the ohms position so that we can take our resistance reading. And then again, we're gonna do the same test. So winding one to winding two, winding one to winding three, and then winding two to winding three. Now the specs for this on this machine is gonna be 0.1 to 1.0 ohms. So we'll go ahead and perform our, our measurements. And right there we're reading 0 0.2 ohms, so it looks like we're in spec on that leg. Then we'll go from Y1 to Y3. Again, we're at 0.2 ohms. And then we'll do winding two to winding three. And right there we are at 0.1 ohms. All right, now again, the next test that we can perform on this is the insulation breakdown. So we're basically just checking for ground. And again, this is a really good test that you can use on other circuits on your machine to check to see if you have a short to ground. Now, once we've got our meter lead connected to winding one, we can take our other meter lead and connect this to ground. So basically, when it comes to finding a ground, you wanna use a chassis ground, a bolt, something that's anchored to metal. The ideal location to put your meter lead would be on the battery's negative cable. So again, it looks like we're reading OL, which is good. We don't want to be able to take a measurement from this. If you do get a measurement, again, remember that means that you've got a short to ground. Also remember that these tests that we're performing are not polarity sensitive, so it doesn't matter which meter lead we use for this test, we can use either one. All right, now that's it for our stator. It looks like it checks out on our static tests. Now, if you're still having a charging issue, again, it might be something to do with your regulator rectifier. Now, the next test that we're going to perform is the test, on, a resistance test on our crank position sensor. Now, here at our connector, we've got three prongs that are inside of there. 
and two of them are going to be for the crank position sensor. So again, when it comes to testing these kinds of components, always be sure to reference your service manual so that you know which connections to make. Now, the service manual states that we should be getting 1,000 ohms of resistance, or 1K ohms, plus or minus 10%. So we should be getting anywhere from 1,100 ohms, 1.1K ohms, to 900 ohms, or 0.9K ohms. And right there, it looks like we're getting our 1,000 ohms, or 1K ohms. So that lets me know that this sensor is in good shape. Now again, when it comes to taking a resistance test, not every service manual is going to have a specification for you to compare your results to, but if you are getting a resistance reading, chances are that the component is in good shape. Now we can also perform an insulation breakdown test to check to see if this is shorting out to ground. So we can check both sides of the circuit, test our other end of our meter lead to ground, And again, we're getting OL, which is a good sign, meaning we do not have a short to ground. All right, so that concludes our static tests. Now to perform our dynamic tests, we're gonna have the engine running. In order to do that, we need to reconnect our crank position sensor, and then we're going to perform some tests on our stator. All right, so now that we've got that put back together, the next test that we're gonna perform is our dynamic test on the stator. Now when you're performing this test, we're gonna be measuring volts AC out of the stator, so we will want to have our meter on the volts AC setting. And also keep in mind that you're gonna to wanna to have the battery in a good state of charge, as with our stator connector disconnected from the rest of the harness, we will not be replenishing the battery with any more electricity. Now when we perform this test, as per the service manual, we're going to be measuring volts AC in three different steps with the machine running. So we'll have the machine on, we'll have our meter in the volts AC, our leads connected, and we're gonna connect our leads to this connector the same way that we did on the static test. So winding one to winding three, winding two to winding three, and then winding one to winding two. So we're gonna have three measurements. Now the first test will be the engine running, and you'll need to have someone to help you and hold the engine at 1300 RPMs. Now the service manual states that we should be reading 21 volts AC plus or minus 25%. So have the engine running, take your measurement, record your results, compare them with the service manual. Now the second step to this test is to hold the engine at 3000 RPMs, take the same measurements, and we should be reading about 47 volts AC, plus or minus 25% of that number. Now the last step, or last test for the stator, it would be to hold the engine at 5,000 RPMs, and we should be reading around 79 volts AC, again, plus or minus 25%. So take the test, record your measurements, and then compare them to the service manual. Now remember that when you're performing these types of tests where the machine's going to be running, make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area. All right, so it looks like our dynamic and static tests check good on the stator. Now, if you're still to have some problems with your charging system, we've got a really great how-to video that will show you how to check your regulator rectifier. And then we also have a really great video that will show you how to check and diagnose your vehicle's charging system. So if you're still having some troubles, be sure to check out those videos. All right, and that's it. Testing the stators on your ATV or UTV is pretty easy, and we'll tell you a lot about what's going on with the bike's electrical. Now, if you need to pick up a replacement, we carry them at our website under the OEM diagram, so be sure to check that out. Now, if you like this video and you want to see more, make sure to hit the like button, then subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, how-tos, and top fives. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain. Thanks for watching, and keep the wrenches turning.